seated uh, for questions after the opening. Uh, obviously, we didn't play well enough today. I didn't coach well enough. Great credit to Michigan State. We all know what a great football program they have. Uh, tremendous class with Coach Antonio and what they do. Um, I thought uh, our kids played very, very hard. I don't think there's any question how hard they played. You know, on offense, we uh, we continue to shoot ourselves in the foot at times, which is disappointing. But it's not because they're not trying, not because they don't care about each other. Uh, we just have to find a way to, to make critical plays at critical time in the first half. I think we had a, a false start that set us back. Then we had a drop. We had a fourth and one, or we had a false start where I believe we had a turn. You know, we ended up having to punt the football. When you're playing a team like Michigan State, every drive matters, um, especially when you get field position. So on offense, um, you know, we didn't we didn't execute well enough. I thought our defense. We had one third down and long in the first half, and we weren't quite where we wanted to be. That allowed them to get that touchdown drive. Other than that. I thought we played really good in the first half. They really played, you know, all game, but they had the next touchdown drive there in the second half. It was 17 to three, and we go out there and make a tremendous play on the turnover. Byron makes it, you know, we had a deflected pass, makes the play. And uh, great credit to Michigan State. They did exactly what we all talk about. They came up and knocked the football out and got the you know, recovered in the end zone. If you think about that play right there, it would have been 17 to 10, right? You know, we were talking about this far away. Obviously, the next play. You know, they go in and we don't quite you know, fill our gaps as we should. They go score a touchdown and it's 24 to three. So we're right there playing you know, one of the top programs in the nation, certainly one of the top programs in our league. And it was, we're that far away from being 17 to 10. So our players played very, very hard. They played together. You know, we, we got to coach better. I got to coach better. And so it falls on me. But I'm so proud of our players and, and the way they played today. Uh, we, just, we just didn't play well enough to win the football game. And, and that's why we play. So that's why we play football. So uh, we'll be excited to come back and play next week. Take questions. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Can you describe what this week was like emotionally for the players, and do you think that led to any any form of ex exhaustion that could have taken a toll in this game? I really can't speak to you know how the players feel about about the week. I, I think they played really hard. I didn't feel like we had any trouble playing hard today. No. Okay. Coach, you talked about the players. Uh, will we be will be able to talk to the players or? Um, they're going to be available to talk on Tuesday. You know, that's that's when we're going to come back. It's a tough loss. All right? You got. You know, we have a lot. You know, I want to answer your questions. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. But right now, for us, we just lost a football game. And um, so, any questions we have, I'll answer them. Um, our players are are more than capable of, of speaking, and they will. And they've had a big week, a challenging week. But right now, they're. You know, that's the great thing about this game. We went out there to play football today, and our guys were ready to play. They played very, very hard. Anybody wants to question that, we'll talk to you. We didn't win the football game, so that's where they are right now. They're worried about it. They're disappointed they didn't win a football game. Matt, I understand you can't put words in your player's mouth, but for, for you, the yo-yoing of the week and, and really the season, just personally for you, how, how was it? I think we've, we, I think we've done a really good job as a program of taking it day by day. That's what we've said the whole time. Now, this week was a challenging week. You know, I'm not going to miss you know, that. That's a fact. You guys all know that. Uh, but we came in. We, we worked every day. Our kids played hard every day. Tuesday, things happened. Wednesday, things happened. Thursday morning, 745, we were in there meeting. We were working. So, so proud of our players. And um, we focused on each other. And again, we lost today because we just didn't play well enough. We played a really good football team. And I didn't coach well enough. Back to Wayne. Coach, on the offense, where do you look to improve on the offense and how do you get this team to grow so that it competes better against the big boys of the Big Ten? I'm looking my, I got to coach better. That's the answer. I mean, we, 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 they were leading the, the Big Ten, maybe they, whatever they're leading in, in rushing defense, right? They're really good. Yeah. And they played really good up front. We tried to throw the ball at times. The wind affected us a little bit. Then it affected them too. Uh, but we, you know, we had some opportunities. Again, like I said, we had a drop pass. 
Uh, we had a deep ball down the field that we missed. You know, when you play a team like that, it comes down to those few plays. And I know everybody doesn't see that. Everybody's going to see the score, which is great. But that's when you really look at it, there were some really key plays in there. You know, the fourth and one, when we jumped on, on their side, we're moving. That's a big play. It's a big play. The third down that we dropped, it's a big play. The big post down the field that, you know, we didn't make the play on. So um, it's a big play. So I got to coach better. That's where we start. They are very good. They are they're a really good football team, but we didn't play our best. So we gotta figure out how to coach better and play our best football. And if we don't win we play our best football, then we gotta live with that. We gotta live with it either way, but you know, our kids are disappointed because they didn't play their best football. And we were still right there. Yeah. Right? We make that score at seventeen to ten, eleven minutes to go, we're right in the game. Matt, um, is Matt Barber still on this team? Matt Barber has uh, you know, I haven't he, he's not been around. Um, so I, whenever I see Matt Barber, we'll see where he wants to be as far as being on the team. Dave Preston to your right. Coach. Coach, the, uh, again, defensively, the, the way that uh, Michigan State was able to take charge and control of the game. What, as somebody who's trying to dial up plays when you're getting these third and ten, third and twelves, what's the, what's, the, what's the most frustrating thing for you in that regard? It was frustrating that we, you know, there, there were some opportunities. Again, we knew, we didn't come in here thinking we were going to run the ball down, down the field on them. And obviously, if you look, we, I think, I'm not positive on this, but we'd have time, maybe, maybe 16 passes called or 10 runs or something like that. I'm not positive that might be wrong, but Emily, you'll have that figured out at some point. I know, but I, something like that. So we were trying to do, you know, we were trying to take advantage of what they, of what they let you do or don't let you do, and you have to make plays. A win in the first quarter affected those down the field throws. They are a very, very aggressive defense. That's why they've been so good so long. They've been in the top five or so or ten in rushing defense every year for however long Coach D'Antonio has been doing it. And so we knew that. And they took some things away. There were some opportunities to make plays that you know you have to make them when it presents itself. And that's the hard thing about our game. Every play is the play. Maybe the eighth play of the game that was the touchdown. And when you when you lose 17 to 10 or whatever, it's like that was the play. Now I realize it was 24 to 3. I understand what happened, but we were right there. So I got to I got to call better plays, and we have to play better. Uh, for the first eight weeks of the season or so, you seemed hesitant at times, calling yourself head coach, and you kind of wanted to be more the offensive coordinator. Now that there has been a permanent decision about DJ Jerkin, are you more comfortable with those roles and, and calling yourself as an interim head coach? Yeah, but that's what my title is. I, I'm not. We're not going to change. I think that's one of the. You know, you'd be the same guy every day. I'm going to be the same guy every day. We, we've had really. You know, we're sitting there. And we're, we're not where we wanted to be, but we're not. We're also could be a lot, a lot different too. We've won some football games. We've played well against people. So we're not going to make any changes now in how we approach things. I'm still going to be the offensive coordinator. I'm going to be the cheerleader for the defense. And, and um, you know, we're, we're going to keep doing exactly what we've been doing. We're not going to panic. We just have to play better. I have to coach better. Talked about it earlier in terms of shooting yourself in the foot. In, in terms of where Kasim is, uh, is that a matter of maturity? Is that a matter of just experience in terms of some of the things that happen with him? whether it's bad snaps or 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 his you know decision making at times? Yeah, it was all over the place. I mean, it wasn't uh, Kasim. But actually, early in the game, I thought was playing pretty well. I thought he made some good plays and you know, made some good reads. He had a couple of reads later and, and some opportunities that we missed some plays, which he knows. And he was very frustrated with himself on one because we had a guy open he missed it. But, um, you know, he's played. It was all over. He said, it's so if it's all over, we all got to get a little bit better. But he's he's continuing to get better. Obviously, the one ball slipped out of his hand. It was just kind of it's one of those days. Obviously, you acknowledged that this was a disruptive week. But now that things have kind of been temporarily settled anyway. Are you hopeful and optimistic that this, there can be some sense of stability here for the next three weeks? You know, all we can do is, is, is take it day by day. And uh, I'm hopeful that our kids will come in tomorrow like they have every other day and look at each other and know that we wish we had won. We're still here together and we have, you know, 20 days left to enjoy being around each other. And that's what football is. You enjoy the season you're in because every year it changes. Players leave, coaches leave. That, that's that's true on every football uh, program in the country. So we're going to approach it the same way we always have. We're going to just come in and be excited about you know grading ourselves tomorrow. So one thing we do in this place is we're honest with each other. 
pull the thumb, I could have done this better, fair. You could have done that better, fair. Fix it, move on, and um, get ready to play in the end. Coach, um, Michigan State's punter, uh, Berenger, he had two shank punts. Uh, put you guys in good field position. How frustrating was it that you guys weren't able to capitalize on offense going forward? It was frustrating anywhere we started, but certainly the, the plays you're discussing are the plays you're discussing are, are, are right. We I thought we did a nice job creating some pressure. Our punt, team, our punt pressure team did a nice job. They got in there on them. He had a couple punts. We had the ball on our side of the or their side of the 50. One of those was the fourth and one I'm referring to. You know, we were moving the ball and we had a chance and we didn't make the play. Uh, so it's very frustrating. We're, as I said, I always say, I don't care if it's you know 63 to 60 or. Any, three to nothing. If, if we win, we're happy. If we lose, we're not. So uh, I'm frustrated we didn't play well enough to win the game. Coach, did you prepare for two quarterbacks this week? If so, how? And what makes Michigan State's defense tough to move on third down? We prepared for both because we weren't sure who was going to play. So obviously, you, know, you look at, I think every, you know, obviously that's one of the defensive staff who's doing a great job. You know, you look at what each guy does well. So if he's in the game, he's like, he likes to throw this, this, and this. He's more of a running threat, and that's true. Anytime you have multiple quarterbacks who play, it's all statistical driven and you know what they do well, and you try to talk about that. And you have to stop every play that, that they have. Um, and then it's what makes their defense so good is they're, you know, they're four, three, cover four, and they're down in there and they stop the run. They dare you to throw the ball outside, they play press. You have to make tough throws in tough spots, and you have to execute those throws. And uh, we weren't able to do that today, so that's part of how we. Thank you, Coach. Okay. On Tuesday, we'll have Coach Hannon's press conference and open portion of practice.